Thinking about buying a franchise? Then the How to Buy a Franchise show is just for you. Here's your host, Dr. John Hayes. What about expansion in the United States compared to expansion in other countries? How are you dividing your time on that and how's that working and and how does that fit into the future of fast science? Well, when we talk about the U.S., we have already gone through and looked at and have over 300 open and approved markets. In other words, open markets with enough business count and business mix to successfully support a fast science. So we know, we even though we have over 540 locations in the U.S., we could have over 300 more. Okay. Without having any negative impact on any of those existing franchisees. Yeah. In Canada. We know we have 35 open and approved markets ready to go in addition to the 30 locations we already have. We have one team of people that are developing the U.S. and Canada. Then we have another team of people that work on international. So it's not as if you will, you stop focusing on international when you're focusing on domestic. Yeah. Because we're a very mature franchisor, very healthy financially, we're able to have, if you will, two teams that are working on that. Yes. Uh, and we're very excited about the kind of international expansion that we've experienced in the last few years and what we expect to have come down the pipeline very shortly. Okay. And what about, do you sell a master franchise opportunity or is it area development internationally? You know, internationally we'll go either way. Yeah. It depends on what that candidate wants to do. So in Saudi Arabia, we sold an area development agreement because they wanted to own all the locations. In the United Arab Emirates and in four countries in Northern Africa, we sold a master license because that particular gentleman has a franchising background and he wants to be a master franchisee. Okay. So we really look at either of those two models for international expansion based on the qualified candidate we're dealing with. And do you prefer one over the other? We really don't have a preference. We're okay. very successful at both. Okay, so master franchisees, I speak to a lot of them and I see a lot of them at international conferences and the, the complaint that many of them will have is that they're not able to make money because they don't know how to be a franchisor. So not only do they have to learn how to operate a unit and maybe I don't know in your case if they're required to operate a unit for a period of time, but some franchisors do that. But then they've got to go out and generate leads like at an expo such as this, and then they've got to sell the franchise. And these are all different things, operating a franchise, lead generation, selling franchises, training and supporting franchisees. It's these. So how do they do it? How, how are you helping them get it done? Well, we have a basic training track on how to operate successfully one or more Fast Signs locations. And we have, whether they're an area developer or a master franchisee, go through that. Then we have a second week of training, initially just for the master licensee, to make sure he understands how to be a franchisor. And then we have an executive, either myself or Mark Jamison, spending time in that country every year, focusing on the franchisor part of the business, not the wow. not the operating part of the business. Yeah. And we now annually have a master franchisee meeting after our annual convention. They're gonna be there for our annual convention anyway. We spend a day, day and a half talking about franchisor issues, yes. how to be a franchisor. Because you're exactly right, those are two different areas of expertise they yes. need to know. And this is an again, a huge commitment for a franchisor financially to provide all these levels of support and training. So how are you doing that? How, how do you manage to make sure that this is affordable to, to Fast Signs, that you can still make a profit at the end of the year? Well, first, I believe that if you're looking at going into a new international country with a master franchisee or an area developer, you ought to budget revenues lower than you think they're going to be and you ought to budget expenses higher than you think they're gonna be, because chances are you'll be fine in that case, yes. right? Um, because we're committed to training, and we see that as one of the single most important things a franchisor can do to their individual franchisees, their multi-unit franchisees, or their master franchisees, we just make sure that that happens. It's a commitment. We know that long-term we'll have a bigger payout if we invest more in training repetitively that first handful of years. Okay. What do you think that um, if you were to give one piece of advice to people who are watching or listening and they're going to buy a franchise, whether it's Fast Signs or not, what's the one piece of advice you would give them that would help them be, be successful in franchising regardless of what they want? Well, jokingly, I was going to say just buy a Fast Sign. Yes. But I know we, well, the most important thing is first make sure that you are fit to be a franchisee. Yes. And then second is find a brand 
that you can be passionate about and you do the due diligence to make sure they take great care of their franchisees and their franchisees make money. So I'm going to say it's two things. Make sure you've got the right makeup, behavioral makeup to be a franchisee, to follow a proven system. That doesn't mean you're not going to come up with ideas, but you're going to share those ideas with your franchisee or probably going to test them together rather than just go change it on your own. So the right behavioral makeup to be a franchisee. And number two, find a brand that loves their franchisees, franchisees have strong profitability, and that you can be passionate about. Okay, great. That's great advice. And I think that, uh, that, that, with that if you do those things, regardless of the kind of franchise you buy, particularly if you check it out, and the franchisor is uh, honest and, and uh, reputable, particularly, and I, and I find franchisors who are members of the International Franchise Association generally tend to be a little better grade of franchisor. I think that's very important and a good sign. So if you do what Catherine is saying, I think you've got a great future in franchising. Thank you for listening to How to Buy a Franchise Show. If you want immediate assistance, visit howtobuyafranchise.com to contact Dr. John Hayes for a free consultation.